In this video, we will discuss ways that allow us to change the values of the parameters of an instance without changing the set of optimum solutions. Such techniques can be used to rewrite models for various reasons. As an example, we can use a model formulation for the furniture production problem that was discussed in a previous video. Recall that we were concerned about producing tables and chairs using a limited amount of small parts. Our goal was to earn a maximum amount of money by selling the tables and chairs produced at a given price. A possible model formulation was the following. Maximize 16 times the number of tables plus 10 times the number of chairs. Subject 2 2 times the number of tables plus the number of chairs is less than or equal to 6. 2 times the number of tables plus 2 times the number of chairs is less than or equal to 8. And the domains. Assume now that we slightly modify our problem. The furniture must be transported to the customers. We have to rent a van for that and the van is available at a fixed price of 30 euros. That vehicle is large enough to carry all the furniture that is produced. It's not hard to integrate this aspect into the model. Try to modify the model by yourself and pause the video now. All we have to do is to subtract the 30 euros from the revenue. The new objective function would be maximize 16 times the number of tables plus 10 times the number of chairs minus 30. The rest of the model remains unchanged. Would that modification lead to a different optimum solution? Think about it and pause the video again if the answer is not obvious to you. Clearly, the answer is no. It would be best to produce the same number of tables and chairs as before. From a technical point of view, we have seen in this example that adding a constant to the objective function, we have added minus 30 in our example, does not change the optimum solution. And this is true in general. Adding to the objective function a constant term that does not depend on the decision variables is not relevant for the purpose of optimization. This is true for minimization problems also. My advice would be to cancel out any additive constants from the objective function to keep the optimization model as simple as possible. Please do not understand me wrong. For the interpretation, the added constant is important. It makes a difference whether you talk about revenues or about profits. But these constants can easily be added afterwards and this is the way they should be handled. There is no need to include them in the model. Let's consider just another problem variant. Assume that the model formulation describes a typical working day. The availabilities of the parts do not differ from one day to the other and the furniture prices are the same each and every day. What would be the maximum revenue per week, assuming that a week consists of five working days? How would you change the model to maximize the revenue per week? Again, if it's not immediately clear to you, pause the video and think about it. The model formulation that maximizes the weekly revenue looks like this. Maximize five times the daily revenue. The rest of the model remains the same as before. Would this lead to a different optimum solution? Of course not. Each day you would produce the same number of tables and chairs as before. This teaches us a general rule. Multiplying the objective function with a positive constant does not change the set of optimum solutions. And again, this also holds for minimization problems. If we like to, we could multiply any objective function with any positive constant. 
in our example, for instance, the objective maximize eight times x1 plus five times x2 would lead to the same optimum solution as the original objective. But be careful, a negative multiplier or zero would change the set of optimum solutions. In a previous video we have already seen that we would have to change maximize into minimize or vice versa if we used negative multipliers. Now that we have discussed what happens if we multiply the objective function with a factor, it might be interesting to study what happens if we do so with a constraint. Take the second constraint for instance. We could multiply both sides with, say, a half to get x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 4. This is equivalent to what we had before. Using positive multipliers is no problem and this is true not only for less than or equal to constraints but also for greater than or equal to constraints as well as equalities. Watch out when you use negative multipliers. For equations this is no problem at all. But inequalities must be treated with care. If you use a negative multiplier a less than or equal to constraint turns into a greater than or equal to constraint and vice versa. We have already discussed this in a previous video where we have used the multiplier minus 1. Just to complete the picture, we have discussed that we can add a constant to the objective function without harm. It should be clear that with constraints we can add any term, constant or not, as long as we add this term to the left hand side and to the right hand side. What we've discussed so far applies to any models with any kind of expressions. Something interesting is possible if we consider linear models. Without loss of generality, we can assume that the constraints of a linear model look like follows. a1 times x1 plus a2 times x2 plus and so on up to a n times x n less than or equal to equal to or greater than or equal to a0 this indicates that the right hand sides are constants and the left hand sides are sums of terms that depend on the decision variables. In linear models we can multiply all right hand sides with the same multiplier if desired. Let's do this with our furniture example using the multiplier a half. I claim that maximize 16x1 plus 10x2 subject to 2x1 plus x2 is less than or equal to 3 and 2x1 plus 2x2 is less than or equal to 4 1 and x2 are greater than or equal to 0. I claim that this is equivalent to the model above. To see this, let's multiply all constraints as well as the objective function of the original model with a half, which is something we can do as discussed above. So we have maximize 16 times a half times x1 plus 10 times a half times x2 subject to 2 times a half times x1 
plus a half times x2 is less than or equal to 3 and 2 times a half x1 plus 2 times a half x2 is less than or equal to 4 and of course x1 x2 greater than or equal to 0. Now introduce new decision variables x1 prime and x2 prime and substitute x1 equals 2x1 prime and x2 equals 2x2 prime. That leads to maximize 16 x1 prime plus 10 x2 prime subject to 2 x1 prime plus x2 prime is less than or equal to 3 and 2 x1 prime plus 2 x2 prime is less than or equal to 4 and x1 prime and x2 prime are greater than or equal to 0. Now we rename the variables and we are done. But be careful. In any solution of the new model formulation the values of the variables are equal to half times the old values because of our substitution which also changes the objective function value accordingly. The final remark is dedicated to further problems related to inequalities for any model, linear or not. Let's look at equalities first to demonstrate what we can do with them. Assume that we modify our furniture problem once more. Now we want to have that all small parts are used and nothing is left over. A model for this situation may look like follows. Maximize. 16 times the number of tables plus 10 times the number of chairs subject to 2 times the number of tables plus the number of chairs equals 6 and 2 times the number of tables plus 2 times the number of chairs equals 8 x1 and x2 are greater than or equal to zero. In the context of equalities, we know that they can be added to give a new equality and to replace one of the old ones. For example, maximize 16 times x1 plus 10 times x2 subject to Four times x1 plus three times x2 equals 14 and two times x1 plus two times x2 equals 8 x1 and x2 are greater than or equal to 0 this is equivalent to the original model with inequalities, this does not work. The original model, 16 times x1 plus 10 times x2, subject 2, 2 times x1 plus x2 is less than or equal to 6, 
need 2 times x1 plus 2 times x2 is less than or equal to 8. x1, x2 greater than or equal to 0. And on the other hand, maximize 16x1 plus 10x2 subject to 4 times x1 plus 3 times x2 is less than or equal to 14. 2 times x1 plus 2 times x2 is less than or equal to 8. x1 and x2 are greater than or equal to 0. They are not equivalent because x1 equals 3.5 and x2 equals 0 is feasible for the second formulation but not for the first.